are eating our final breakfast here in Weymouth and super excited to dig in. We're still at the Stone Throw guest house and having a great time here. But we're heading over to Cornwall today. So we'll see you guys soon. Hey travelers, so we thought we were heading straight to Cornwall, but we got a lot of recommendations to come over to Portland um, or the Isle of Portland, which is- from our guest house that we were staying at. Yeah, so- and We must come. Yeah, Nikki at the guest house said stop by here. Um, so we're checking out, there's a church over here and a lighthouse and a beach. And I think maybe a castle. So let's see what we find. We just passed the Portland Museum and we're, I definitely want to find that lighthouse. So let's go. Bye. The Isle of Portland is four miles long and juts into the English Channel, making it the southernmost point in the county of Dorset. It's joined to the mainland by Chesil Beach, which is a long barrier beach that you cannot miss while driving in and out. This stone structure here is Rufus Castle, which is also known as Bow and Arrow Castle. While a defensive stronghold has been on this site since William II's reign around 1,000 years ago, the ruined building that we see today was a reconstruction that occurred in the 1400s. It was made of local Portland limestone, which is also what was used to build St. Paul's Cathedral and Buckingham Palace, and is still actively quarried on the island today. Although there is no public access to the castle because it's still privately owned, you can see it very well from the public walkways that we found. We are driving to the lighthouse now in Portland. I think we found the lighthouse, I'm so excited. road is just of the freaking ocean. It's so beautiful. This view is incredible as you approach. There's white horses. Wait, what? There's, There's horses. horses? Oh my gosh, you're right. Everyone has a jacket. Blanket. I like when the horses wear blankets. There's two lighthouses. Portland Bill Lighthouse is one of the most popular destinations for tourists in Portland and has been in operation since it was built in 1906. This lighthouse does very important work to protect coastal traffic and the UK shipping industry. This is because the coastline here features a lot of shallow reefs as well as the Shambles Sandbank, which has made the area infamous for shipwrecks over the centuries. Next, we decided to stop at the St. George's Church, where I decided to get on my camera bag and wander the grounds. This church was built between 1754 and 1766 for the Church of England, using, you guessed it, local Portland limestone. This beautiful church recently underwent restoration in the 1960s, and that's despite the fact that it's only used for worship services twice a year, once on St. George's Day and once on Christmas Day. You will see as we drive across Portland that the geology of the island is quite different on the south side compared to the north side. The gentle sloping land by the Portland Bill Lighthouse is called Top Hill, while the steeply sloping land at the north is called Underhill. I'm definitely glad that we got to drive those steep hills instead of walking them on foot. The island itself sits very centrally along England's UNESCO World Heritage Jurassic Coast and is an easy day trip from Weymouth, given that it's only about an eight mile drive away. As Liz mentioned before, there's a long barrier beach that connects Portland to Dorset's mainland, and you can see it on the left side of the road as we drive. On the right is Portland Harbor, which is one of the largest man-made harbors in the world, and began its life as a Royal Navy base in the early 1900s. After playing a very prominent role in the First and Second World Wars, Portland Harbor was most recently used in the 2012 Olympic sailing events. Driving along the coast through the rest of the county of Dorset is extremely beautiful. We loved that we found different viewpoints to stop at for panoramic views of the sea, as well as drive through charming historic villages along our way to the seaside town of Lyme Regis. 
so many of our followers had told us to check that town out, so we thought we would do just that. When we arrived in Lyme Regis, we were blown away by how cute it was. That said, since it was mid-October 2020, we decided it looked a little too crowded on the narrow sidewalks for our personal comfort, so we decided to practice some pandemic safety and just drive slowly around the town for a bit instead of stopping and exploring on foot. We definitely hope, though, that we can come back someday soon. Because look at all those adorable shops and restaurants for me to eat at. Cream tea is a form of afternoon tea that is a specialty of both Devon and Cornwall and both include a pot of tea, scones, jam, and clotted cream. That said, the two counties famously serve their cream teas slightly differently in a crosstown rival sort of way. In Devon, it's traditional to put the cream on the scone first and then top it with jam, but in Cornwall, they do it reversed. It's a thing. After a bit more driving, we decided to stop for a late lunch and walk around the cathedral town of Exeter in Devon. The church in this view actually isn't the cathedral, but we love this vista, and it's instead a really pretty church called St. Michael's of All Angels. What's up, travelers? So it's uh, Derek here from Means to Travel, and right now we are in Exeter, uh, which is a cathedral town on the south coast of England, and we're on our way to Cornwall, but we got a little bit hungry. It's a little after 2, 2.30. It's like 3 o'clock. And, um, you know, we decided that we need to get something to eat. And unfortunately, at that time in England, you might find that things are a little bit closed. But we were able to find this really cool tapas restaurant called Tapi Tapa. Um, it's pretty close to the cathedral. And after this, we're going to go take a look around before we head back on to Cornwall, because we still have about a two-hour drive ahead of us. It's a long one today. So hopefully you've enjoyed the journey. And uh, we'll pick it back up once we get to it. OK, so our first dish has come. It's gambas al ajillo. And it is a uh, shrimp dish, tapas, that is pretty common in Spanish restaurants. So, how is it? I'm into it. So the octopus has just come out. It's a uh, pulpo, and it looks awesome. How is the shrimp? It's good. Um, I'm really looking forward to this. So that is octopus on top of thinly sliced potato. <laughs> it's not supposed to do that. Friends, that was just a user error. Very good. The paella has come and it it's looks yummy. Chicken and chorizo. It's pollo y chorizo. See? Ooh, look at that steam. Super fresh. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So they said this is enough for two people. Um, probably do three if you're ordering a lot of tapas like we did. Um, but we can take some home too. I don't know, I might finish it. <laughs> so this car park in Exeter gives you a little like RFID chip token when you come in that kind of, I guess, imprints like the time that you enter and everything and then you use it to do the pay station, it calculates, you know, as you're leaving, it calculates the time you've been there, how much you owe, you pay it, and then you use this to actually leave the car park, which is the only way that the lift will go up. So, cool way for them to make sure that people actually pay for parking. Let's go make sure this works. Well, first, I'd like to put in directions for where we're going, which is a new initiative that I'm doing, which is directions before I start driving. I know, that it's really got you. A didn't request it, Liz. of the people, really. <laughs> Don't just start driving. He's giving the people what they want. And by people, she means herself. <laughs> Two hours and 13 minutes. Ooh, that added time. Ooh, connect phone. Let's do this. Yes. Start. 
Okay. See so everybody else ready? Everybody else is ready. Is this what the people want? Crash. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> See if this token should be worth it's like Chuck E. Cheese. Yay, you drive safely. It's like Chuck E. Cheese. We get a fun dragon game when we put the token in. Every token's a winner. <laughs> Well, that's not true because we got rejected the first time. Well, let's keep trying not to play. It's because we didn't realize we had the payment system. Okay. Well, that was fun. Thanks, Derek, for explaining that. Well, this is fun. This is supposed to be a 60 mile per hour road right now. No way. That's what it says. No. <laughs> Do not do it. <laughs> we finally made it to our Cornwall Airbnb right at sunset to see these beautiful colors in the sky. If you liked watching this video today, please give it a thumbs up down below and definitely subscribe to this channel too if you don't want to miss any of our travel videos or UK travel vlogs to come. Thanks everybody for watching. Cheers. Happy travels. Bye. Hey travelers, don't forget to subscribe and let's hang out more. Here are some links to other helpful travel videos on my channel and press that notification bell so you don't miss any new and awesome travel videos to come.